Okay, so let's continue our discussion of dimensioning, um, dimensioning individual parts, detailed dimensioning. Uh, we just did a uh, dimensioning uh, or, or a, a detailed drawing of the top plate here, and we've finished the dimensioning. All right, and now we're going to go on to the next part, um, and I feel like we're going to do the axle support, okay? Um, so we're going to kind of work in the chain, right? The, the chain of this top plate and then connected to the top plate is the axle support. And that's going to give us a good foundation uh, to, to work from here. Okay, so let's go to uh, drawing and design. And again, not full drawing. We're going to select and we'll select the top plate. Um, it doesn't matter which one we do, uh, left or right, you know, so... Um, I suppose we should choose one based on how we want the views to develop. That would be a good point. Um, but let's just see what this, what this does. You know, again, I want to reiterate, um, you know, this, this is kind of like writing a paper. You, you don't sit down and just start writing the paper and that's just going to be your final copy. There's always rough drafts and there's outlines and things. So, Think of this as, you know, we're, we're starting the rough draft, okay? I'll stick with B size again, ASME, and we'll go here. Now, um, one of the things that we need to do here, obviously, is we need to pick our views. We're going to have three views in this, okay? Um, I already know that because of the complexity of the part. We're going to need three views, Um so which view I want to choose, and I know that I, I want to use a section view um, because there's some internal details here that I want to show. Uh, so, you know, maybe it would be better to kind of put the views on and then figure out where my section view is. So, so let's do this kind of in stages. So I'm going to place this base view. This is not necessarily going to be my, my final view selection, but I'm going to use it as a way to kind of see what views are out there and how I want to arrange these. So we'll go like this, um, and then we'll uh, do our right side view, our top view, and uh, bottom view like so. Okay. Then we'll get those in there go and it's taking a little bit of time there we go all right now uh, and, and again I'm not worried about that coming out at the top because we're gonna rearrange all these so um, so a couple things I want I want to choose my first view my front view right um, I want to identify the view that I want to make as my section view um, I suppose I should also put this in there so let me add one more view right there Okay, um, so I need, I want to choose my front view, I want to choose which view I'm going to have my section view, and then I also want to choose maybe my orientation of views. Okay, um, so I, you know, it's, I, I, I hope it's clear that my front view is going to be either this view or this view, right? I think that best, most clearly indicates the you know, the, the shape of the object, the, the overall design of the object. Although, you know, um, it could also be this is my front view. Uh, the difference between this view and this view is not really, uh, there is no difference, so I'm going to get rid of that view, right? So I can go ahead and do that. Um, the difference between this view and this view is a choice of hidden lines. So in this view, I have a hidden edge right here for this surface, but I have a visible edge for this face on the back of the axle support. And these are opposite in this view. I have this as a edge and this is hidden. Uh, I think that I like this better because I, I, I like this view better because I like this edge to be visible. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, and then uh, how else? 
this view and this view, this view has less hidden lines. That surface right there is not hidden. This one it's hidden. So I'm going to get rid of this one. All right. So there's my three views. Um, I think I can, um, I think I can go with that. You know, I think that's pretty good. So I, I want to move these views around a little bit. There we go. And let's move this over here. Right there, I want to give myself enough room to dimension. There we go. Notice how Fusion maintains orthographic alignment, which is important. I would really like to turn this view 90 degrees. But the only way to do that is to, um, is to have this view, this view develop from this side. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Okay. So I'm going to, first of all, project that. Oops. Let me get rid of that. I don't need that view. Let's do that. I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to develop that here. Okay. So all I did was just rearrange those views, right? I, I replaced the left L shape view with the right L shape view so that I could develop this off this, uh, off the, of what will, is my front view, um, and to fit in this space. So that gives me, that works with my natural kind of uh, spatial orientation with the paper, right? I got a kind of a bigger area over here, um, but it still maintains the views that I want to keep. All right, so I have a front view, I have a bottom view, and I have a right side view, okay? <laughs> now, my section view. What's my section view? Well, I want my section view to be this view here, okay? So I'm going, and I'm, I'll keep this up here just so we can see. I'll just move it to the side. But now my section view, I'm, I'm going to develop it from this view. Whoops. Let's see. There we go. And I'm going to cut through here, go down here. And now this is a little bit tricky. I need to use these, these lines like that and develop it this way okay and then there we go all right and i can get rid of that all right now let's zoom in here now the only issue that i have here and again this is not my issue this is a <laughs> this is a fusion issue see that line right there that horizontal line going through that that is incorrect all right but fusion insists on putting that line there when i make a turn with my cutting plane Okay, so uh, according to the the standards for the engineering drawing, there should not be a line there, but Fusion insists on putting it there, so we're just going to have to ignore it. All right, but you see what the section view does is it gives us um, a view of the spot face and the hole and this hole here. All right, so I can get rid of that. So, you know, that, that was a good example of kind of working through the different views and you know just making sure that you got the best views and that everything looks good and, and makes sense now let me go ahead and put in the uh center mark now you see right there it didn't it give didn't give me the center mark there so i'm gonna go back to that and i'll make sure i put pick the circle there we go um and again you know i feel like i say this a lot but and uh, under normal circumstances, we would want to fix this because we have a cutting plane line lying on top of a, whoops, a cutting plane line lying on top of a center mark. But Fusion really doesn't give us the tools to fix that very well. So I'm not going to 
worry about it and I'm not going to grade you off on it. If we were in AutoCAD, I definitely would grade you off on, on that um, because that's a, that's a no, no. Um, but we'll work with what we got. Um, and so I'll put this in here. Now I'll pull this out just a little bit. Maybe I can get it to break. There we go. Just pull it out enough so it breaks. Uh, I don't need one there because I already got the cutting point line in there. Um, we need one here, so we'll go. Huh, that's interesting. See how it's only uh, identifying an arc? Let's see if it puts the full. Yeah, see? So, got to be careful there. There's the circle, and we'll do that. And we do want to pull this out. Now, uh, we need to pull it out on all four sides. Whoops, no, why did that pull it out like that? There, sometimes, sometimes Fusion does some weird things. This aspect of it in AutoCAD is much, much easier to, to deal with. Um, you know, obviously you don't have the automatic views that are created with AutoCAD. Um, let's get this one in here and then we'll get this in here and then we'll pull that out a little bit. I like to get the center marks in there before I get the dimensions in there. Um, I feel like it, it makes less of a mess. All right. Now this is probably the, the most complex drawing to dimen or yeah, drawing part to dimension in in the whole caster assembly thing so um let me get this uh this is all right so um so let's take this one at a time so i'm really going to go through the different features so um we have a hole here so i'm going to start with with the the size dimensions of individual features so um we have a a hole here and you know clearly this is where you wanted to mention that um, we have two holes here now I'm going to dimension it to the outside here and I'll show you why uh, because that's where I want to put my dimension but I got to make a note on this so let me go ahead just so that that I have the dimension there I'm gonna put the 11 there all right now the note for this um and you can see the the notes standard notes this is a standard note in the cad standard so i would direct you to that um plus i think it's also mentioned in the in the uh powerpoint lectures so i'm going to double click on this and what i want this to read this full note is going to be whoops Let me get that in there. There we go. Um, control Enter will add. Hmm. Uh, maybe is it Control Enter? Shift Enter. There it is. Shift Enter. Shift Enter gives us a new line. So at the top of this, I want to say diameter 11, right? And then. The diameter 20 is a spot face. So I'm going to go over here and choose spot face. Now the correct spot face dimension is this with an SF inside. We don't have that because of course fusion doesn't have the latest symbols, but we'll put that in there. Uh, and there's no depth. So I finish it up like that. Okay. Whoops. No, I'm not finished. What, do, what did I forget? Two times space. Okay, so the only reason I got the 11 is there, there, so I know the dimension, right? So I need to get rid of that. Um, so we got that in there. So we got the, and there's no more holes that we need to dimension. Um, now we can dimension the rest of the, of the features, right? Uh, so um, let's get the, this little, base of the L shape. Now I hope that it's clear and I'll show you both this dimension 
whoops, 9.83. Now that's a, that's not what we want right there. We want, we gotta make sure we grab the right point right there, right there, because there we go, it's 10, all right? This dimension is much more pre uh, preferable than than the alternative dimension here. Well, it's not gonna, it's not agreeing with me on putting this dimension in here. This is one of the beauties of, I'll put it right there. There we go, okay. So this, this really is a question of the contour rule, right? Um, so both of these dimensions, the 10 millimeters, uh, dimensions, the thickness of the base, right? But in this view, it's not obvious what that feature is, right? The feature is kind of buried in this view and we can't really see it where here we can clearly see it jutting out. So it follows the contour rule in this view. This is no good. All right. Um, now we also need the thickness here. Let's hope that I have a better luck with this. Um, and again, this view is not really where we want that. We want that to be up here. Now I'm going to dimension it right here, right? Um, is it better to go actually here? I think, and, and part of the issue is finding the right location for the dimension. I think this is a better location than pulling it up, right? If we pull it up, if we go like this, and this is, you know, we have to come from here and go like that, all right? So the difference is I, I, either way, I have an extension line going through my object, but this extension line goes through a critical part of the object and it's longer. This one is less, uh, obtrusive, right? So I'm going to get rid of that, right? Um, and of course, this, this is the contour rule right there. That 10 is good. This 10 is bad. So we don't want that. All right. So there's decisions that you're going to have to make based on some of the rules and guidelines for dimensioning. Um, let's see, what else? I got the, now here, this hidden part of the circle is really part of this whole diameter. Cylinders should be dimensioned in their rectangular view with a diameter. Now this is a cylinder, even though it's shallow. So I'm gonna put it right there. But you cannot forget to have your Diameter symbol, because it is still part of a circle, part of a cylinder. All right, so do we have all the features dimensioned? I got the thicknesses, I need the lengths here. Um, so we'll go from here to here, that's 82. And I want to, I want you to notice that that's a mating dimension with this 82, right? That's exactly where it fits. And so we want to have mating dimensions. Um, we also have a mating dimension. Look, the 58 from hole to hole is going to mate up perfectly with this dimension from here to here. All right. Now I need to space this out a little bit. So I'll move that up and over a wee bit. There we go. And last but not least, the other mating dimension. Let's go in here. Remember the, the 26, right? So we need a mating dimension for that. And that's going to put us right there. Now this is, this is a very subtle yet very, very important um, understanding, um, to have mating dimensions across mating parts. It's absolutely critical. It is absolutely critical. It's not just kind of a 
smiley face sticker kind of thing that, hey, it's a thing you should do. You really have to do it. You have to do that. Um, it, it Otherwise, tolerancing uh, will, will not function properly, will not be applied properly. Okay. So, do, so do I have all the sizes of all the features uh, dimensioned? Um, I got the holes dimensioned. Um, I got the diameter here. Oh, you know what I'm missing is I'm missing this little uh, jut out thing here, right? So I could, I'll use an overall dimension for this. And I don't like that being on that side, so I'm going to pull it across here. All right, so let's so let's just review. So I got the thickness, the thickness. Um, oh, you know what I don't have is I don't have the height. All right, so that's one dimension that I'm missing, right? The height, which you might also say is the location of this hole. All right, and that's an important point. Let's go to the assembly drawing and let's look at the front view. Now notice the location of this hole right there. We're talking about this hole right here is in, in the chain of the assembly, the location of this hole is really derived from the bottom of the part, but the bottom of the axle support at which interfaces with the surface of the top plate. That's where my, uh, th that's where my height or location for this hole is, is really derived from. That's a functional dimension. So I want that functional to dimension to be included in this. All right. And so I'm going to dimension from here to here, right there. Okay. Now, um, you could also dimension it maybe from the, from the side view over here. I suppose that that would also be acceptable. You know, um, I kind of like it in this view here because this shows the whole as a circular feature, but I don't see much wrong with having it over here. Okay. Um, so, but I'm, I'm gonna, we only need one. Um, what else do we need in here? Uh, oh, you know what? We need an overall radius. Okay. So let's get an overall radius for the top of this right there. So do I have the sizes of each feature dimensioned? Yes. Thickness, 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 diameter, right? Um, I don't need that little outcrop because that's 12 minus 10 or 2 millimeters. If I dimension that right there, then I need to get rid of either the 10 or the 12, okay? Um, we got the hole here, the radius on the curve, uh, these two counterbore and, or spot face and hole features, the distance between the holes and the total width and the setback here. So that's fully dimensioned with one exception. I need some notes in here, so I'll go ahead and put the notes in there. Um, uh, let's see. Um, why is specified one all dimensions in millimeters, two um, dimensions per ASME Y 14.5 dash 2009 um, three all fillets and rounds are two radius two and I think that's it so we'll close that All right, and that is my dimensioning for that. So, so that, you know, is, is definitely of this assembly. That's definitely the part that is the, has the most dimensions in it. You know, it, it also acts as the link between the base, the top plate and the wheel and axle assembly, sub assembly. So, um, it's kind of a, uh, an important joint in there. 
Um, but critically in here, really what I wanted to focus on was the mating dimension. So the 26 and the 58 are completely mirrored in the 58 and the 26 here in the cat in the top plate, right? And that's critical. Like I said, that is not kind of a, uh, it feels good to do that. That is absolutely a critical thing that we, that we need to have in there. Um, also the 58 is also critical because that is our functional dimension for the offset for the wheel and axle subassembly from the top plate. All right. So, you know, one of the, one of the nice things that mating dimensions do for you is it kind of gives you an answer in the, um, in the choices. If I, you know, should I use this dimension or this dimension? Mating dimensions and functional dimensions help you to answer that question clearly. All right. All right. So that is that for the, um, caster assembly axle support dimensions. So I will save that and then we'll go on to our next one.